geodesic coordinates. At any point in the space time, we can find a local coordinate system in which the coefficients of uh, affine connection, which we take to be the Christopher symbols, vanish. And uh, this is true only for an infinitesimally small element of space time around the chosen point. And now we discuss the construction of such a coordinate system, uh, which we call the geodesic coordinate system. Consider a point P in the space time and uh, the coordinates used to describe the space uh, be let it be uh, given by x mu. So for the space time, uh, mu have values 1, 2, 3 and 4. So that will be equal to x1, x2, x3 and x4 for the space time. Now, uh, we can always choose a set of coordinates in such a way that uh, x mu at p, that, that is the coordinates of the point p that we have chosen now are all zero. Uh, if it is not zero, for example, if we have a set of coordinates uh, in which uh, x mu p are not zero, we can uh, in fact choose a new set of coordinates which we may call say uh, x tilde of mu uh, such that x tilde of mu is equal to x mu minus x mu of p. Then uh, if we evaluate x tilde mu at p, we have x tilde mu at p equal to x mu at p minus this factor which is x mu at p. Both are the same and therefore this is equal to 0. So that means it is always possible to choose a set of coordinates in such a way that the values of the coordinates for a given point p is equal to 0. Now if you want to construct uh, the geodesic coordinate system at a point p, then we will choose a set of coordinates such that x mu at p is 0 for all values of mu. Now, uh, once this has been done, we will choose a new set of coordinates which we call as x bar rho. A rho also can take values in the case of space time uh, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, x bar rho is defined as x rho plus half k rho alpha beta times x alpha x beta. Now, summation over alpha and beta is implied. And we note that x bar rho evaluated at the point P is equal to this first x rho at P plus half times k rho alpha beta times x alpha at P times x beta at p. But we have already chosen the coordinates such that x alpha at p is 0 and x beta at p is equal to 0. And not only that, x rho at p is also 0. So that means x bar rho at p is identically 0 for all values of rho. Now, we can choose k rho alpha beta to be always symmetric and this is because uh, if I change uh, say alpha, interchange alpha and beta, this equation becomes uh, this part, the second part becomes half k rho beta alpha, then x alpha becomes x beta and then x beta becomes x alpha. But now these are numbers and the products, the multiplication is commutative. So it doesn't matter the order in which I write them. So I can write 
times x that uh, this would be x beta then x alpha but now i can interchange x alpha and x beta so this will become x alpha x beta so this is equal to that and therefore this term can also be written as half of then uh, I can add this and this and take half of that. So this would be equal to half of this term plus that term because both are the same. So that would be half. Half there is a half there common, so it can be taken outside. So that will be half into half. Then uh, k rho alpha beta x alpha x beta plus k rho beta alpha x alpha x beta again x alpha x beta is common and therefore that can be taken outside so i will have x alpha x beta then k rho alpha beta plus from this term k rho beta now this can be written as uh, equal to half of then I take this half here so half of k rho alpha beta plus k rho beta alpha times x alpha beta. Now this object over here remains unchanged uh, under the exchange of alpha and beta so these two indices so if i change alpha to beta and beta to alpha this will become k rho beta alpha which is this term plus this term becomes k rho alpha beta which is this term so this object which i may write as k tilde rho alpha beta is in fact symmetric under exchange of these two indices alpha and beta so this can be written in this form as half k tilde rho alpha beta x alpha x beta which means that uh, we can always choose this k rho alpha beta uh, as symmetric in alpha and beta. Now, uh, we have earlier learned the transformation properties of the Christopher symbols. Uh, suppose, you know, the, in the initial coordinate system, the Christopher symbols are given by gamma. And in the new coordinate system that we have chosen, that is this coordinate system, the bar coordinate system, it's given by gamma bar. Then we have the transformation relation gamma bar rho mu nu equal to x alpha comma mu x beta comma nu x bar rho comma gamma then gamma gamma alpha beta minus x alpha comma mu x beta comma nu x bar rho comma alpha beta now the transformation that equation that we have is x bar rho equal to x rho plus half k rho alpha beta x alpha x beta now from this we have to compute all these terms and find how Christopher tra symbols transform from uh, say gamma uh, alpha beta gamma alpha beta gamma to gamma bar rho mu nu so first we have to take uh, you know the derivative of x bar rho with respect to x alpha so that will be x bar rho comma alpha so that will be derivative of x rho with respect to x alpha plus derivative of this term the second term with respect to x alpha so the first term is dx rho by dx alpha okay so x bar rho alpha is equal to dx rho by dx alpha plus half of k rho alpha beta k rho alpha beta is a uh, is a constant and the coefficients representing the linear uh, 
corresponding to the linear combination given by this equation because we have a summation over alpha and beta. Now we have to take derivative of uh, uh, this quantity uh, with respect to x alpha. So since we are uh, taking derivative with respect to x alpha, it is better to use uh, a different symbol for uh, uh, alpha in, in representing the summation. So let me write it as eta. Uh, theta. C. Okay. So that is d by dx alpha of x c. Uh, let me again uh, change this as c. x beta. Now this derivative can be obtained uh, using the product rule. So what I get is the following. So I will have first I take derivative with respect to x uh, z with respect to x alpha, then multiply with x beta uh, plus x c times derivative of x beta with respect to x alpha. So this will be uh, and now we, I also note that dx z by dx alpha is nothing but the Kronecker delta c alpha. So when I take the, this derivative, I will get uh, first the derivative of this with respect to x alpha, which gives me delta z alpha times x beta plus now x z, then the derivative of x beta with respect to x alpha. So that will give me delta beta. Uh, by the way, this term becomes delta rho and uh, that is what I have written. Now this second term is half. So the second term is half k rho z beta times delta z alpha x beta plus x z delta beta. Now considering uh, the first term, so that becomes, if I remove this, that first term becomes half k rho z beta then delta z alpha x beta but the summation over z is there and this is the Kronecker delta so I replace uh, the occurrence of z by alpha so this will simply become k alpha beta x beta and the second term in the second term I also have a Kronecker delta that is delta beta so the summation over beta can be done and you replace beta by alpha. So the second term is half k rho z and beta will be replaced by alpha then x z. Okay. Now uh, I can uh, since z is a summation variable I can call it by beta. So this term will become half k rho beta alpha x beta. But again, uh, k is symmetric about these two indices, the lower indices, and therefore k rho beta alpha is k rho alpha beta. So I can write it as half k rho alpha beta x beta, which is exactly the same as the first term. So together it becomes k rho alpha beta and that's exactly what we have written here in the second so x bar rho comma alpha which is the derivative of x bar rho with respect to x alpha is simply the Kronecker delta rho alpha plus k rho alpha beta x beta now taking the derivative with respect to uh, beta on this i get x bar rho comma alpha beta now the equal to derivative of this term with respect to x beta but this is Kronecker delta and it is fixed it's independent of the coordinates and therefore the derivative of Kronecker delta is zero so the first term is zero and in the second term I have uh, so d by dx beta of k 
rho alpha. Now I'm taking derivative with respect to beta. And here we have a summation over beta. So it's better to use a different symbol for this summation. So let me use it as k rho z x z. So when I take the derivative, this, these are constant factors. So k rho alpha beta, then derivative of x z uh, with respect to x beta, which is nothing but the Kronecker delta z beta. And the summation of a z can be easily done and where you replace z by uh, beta. So this simply becomes k rho alpha beta and that's what we have here. Now uh, looking at this equation and we find the derivative of x bar rho comma alpha at p. And why do I need this? Because in this expression, if I want to find gamma rho mu nu at p, uh, I have to evaluate these derivatives at p. So, I first see that x bar rho comma alpha at p is equal to, and from this equation, uh, delta rho alpha plus k rho alpha beta then x beta which depends upon the point and if I am evaluating it at p this is equal to x beta at p. Now x beta at p is 0 because that is how we have chosen our initial coordinate system. So that means x bar rho comma alpha at p is equal to the Kronecker delta rho alpha. So that is one kind of term that we have here in this expression, x bar rho comma gamma here r. So another uh, kind of expression that we have is x bar rho comma alpha beta and x alpha comma beta. So we need to find this also. So to get an expression for this, x alpha comma nu mu, which is dx alpha by dx bar mu, whereas this object was dx bar rho by dx gamma. So to find this, we first note that uh, x bar rho comma alpha times x bar alpha comma beta is equal to the Kronecker delta. So the relation is x bar rho comma alpha times x alpha comma beta, which is nothing but dx bar rho by dx alpha times dx alpha by dx beta. But now this summation over alpha is done and therefore we have this nothing but dx bar rho by, oh here I have dx bar beta, dx bar beta which is equal to delta rho by. Now evaluating this expression at the point P, I have x bar rho comma alpha at P times x alpha comma beta at P is equal to this object, right hand side also evaluated at P. But this is Kronecker delta independent of the points and therefore uh, right hand side remains the same. And now these quantities x bar rho comma alpha and x alpha comma beta are to be evaluated at P. But we already know what this is x bar rho comma alpha at p is the Kronecker delta uh, rho alpha. So substituting that over here, we get the following relationship, delta rho comma, uh, sorry, delta rho alpha x alpha comma beta times p equal to delta rho beta. Now the summation of our alpha can be done very easily uh, because we have a Kronecker delta here and you have to replace alpha by rho. So what we get is x rho comma beta at p is equal to delta rho beta. So now uh, we have got uh, expression for this object at p which will be delta rho gamma and these objects at p. For example, this one will be Evaluated at P will be delta alpha mu and this one will be delta beta mu. And what about this object? We have already seen that 
x bar rho comma alpha beta is uh, the constant factor k rho alpha beta. So we have got all those terms that appear in the transformation equation. So substituting that over here, we get gamma bar rho mu nu p equal to uh, from the first term I have delta alpha mu, then delta beta nu, then delta rho gamma. So delta alpha mu, delta beta nu, delta rho gamma, then gamma gamma alpha beta at p minus I have these terms this is delta alpha mu delta beta nu then this is k rho alpha beta delta alpha mu delta beta nu k rho alpha beta now the summation over alpha gives you know this alpha replaced by mu and summation over uh, beta gives beta replaced by nu and summation over gamma gives gamma replaced by rho. So we have the right hand side of this equation equal to gamma rho alpha beta p minus now again in the second term the summation over alpha gives alpha equal to mu here and summation over beta here gives beta equal to nu. So k rho, uh, sorry, summation over uh, beta gives uh, k rho uh, mu nu. So I have to change this. So here alpha becomes mu, beta becomes nu, and uh, this gamma becomes rho. So this is equal to gamma rho mu nu at p minus, this is wrong, k rho mu nu. So uh, gamma rho, sorry, gamma bar rho mu nu at p is equal to gamma rho mu nu at p minus k rho mu nu. Now our aim is to find a coordinate system x bar for which the Christoffel symbols are zero. Now this will be zero provided the right hand side is zero and the right hand side is zero if we choose k rho mu nu equal to gamma rho mu nu p. So we can construct a new coordinate system x bar rho so that uh, k rho mu nu equal to gamma rho mu nu at p and the new coordinates given by x bar rho equal to x rho plus half uh, k rho alpha beta x alpha x beta. So explicitly this is equal to x rho plus half gamma rho alpha beta evaluated at p x alpha x beta. If I do this then in the new coordinates x bar rho gamma bar will be 0 identically. And in uh, these coordinates, these new coordinates given by uh, this expression are called the geodesic coordinates. And these are local coordinate systems because you know if I go away from this point and if I evaluate gamma bar p at a point different sorry gamma bar at a point different from p in this coordinate system it will not be zero identically. Now the good thing about geodesic coordinate system is that at that particular point since gamma are all zero the covariant derivatives become the ordinary derivatives because the other factor in, uh, over here involves gamma and all the components of gamma are zero in the geodesic coordinate system. So in the geodesic coordinate system a mu semicolon nu equal to a mu comma nu. So the covariant derivatives becomes the uh, reduces to 
uh, the ordinary derivatives. We now come back to the Riemann tensor. As we have already seen in one of our earlier classes, the Riemann curvature tensor is defined by this expression. And the covariant curvature tensor is obtained by uh, the inner product of uh, the Riemann curvature tensor with the covariant metric tensor which is given as r alpha mu beta gamma is equal to g mu eta then r alpha eta beta gamma and from our uh, tensor theory class we have also seen that uh, the covariant curvature uh, tensor has certain symmetry properties and the first set of symmetries are uh, like this if i interchange the first two indices that is alpha and beta i will get r beta alpha eta gamma but that is equal to minus of r alpha beta eta gamma so it changes sign under the interchange of the first and second indices that's given by this equation Similarly, it changes sign under the interchange of the second and third indices. So, R alpha beta rho eta equal to minus of R alpha beta eta rho. Now, the second set, the second uh, symmetry involves the interchange of the first pair of indices with the second pair of indices. So, R alpha beta eta rho equal to R eta rho alpha beta and there is a third symmetry property that is if you fix one of the indices that is this index alpha first and cyclically permute the remaining three indices i will get three terms uh, for example r alpha beta eta rho and cyclically permuting the uh, second third and fourth indices i get r alpha rho beta eta and doing it once more i will get r alpha eta rho beta and taking sum of all these three terms that should be equal to zero now this is an independent symmetry a symmetry independent of these two equations only if all the four indices are different if at least one of or if at least two of these indices are the same then it will reduce to one of those symmetry properties Now, from uh, the Riemann curvature tensor, we define a new tensor quantity uh, by introducing a contraction with, between uh, the contravariant uh, index and the third covariant index. So, I have R alpha mu beta mu. So, these two indices are the same and therefore, it is being summed over. The free indices are alpha and beta. They are covariant indices. So, I will end up with a tensor which is of covariant rank 2. So, R alpha beta equal to R alpha mu beta mu. And this tensor is called the Ricci tensor. And Ricci tensor has the following symmetry property. R alpha beta is equal to R beta alpha. Now, we can prove this in the following way. R alpha mu beta gamma uh, is related to the covariant curvature tensor via the following formula. Uh, G mu eta R alpha eta beta gamma. And uh, this is because uh, we have defined R alpha eta beta gamma as G eta uh, say some other index say z or maybe rho uh, times r alpha rho beta gamma then uh, taking uh, inner product with uh, g mu eta 
So if I do this G mu uh, enter, I have to do this over here. So G mu. Now this inner product with eta being uh, summed over results in delta mu rho, and the summation with the Kronecker delta gives. Uh, you know, a row has to be replaced by mu. So I will get R alpha comma rho is replaced by mu beta gamma. And this is exactly the same result that we have for here. That is G mu eta R alpha eta beta gamma. That is this one is equal to R alpha mu beta gamma. Okay. So now R alpha beta is equal to R alpha mu beta mu, but this can be written using this formula as G mu eta R alpha eta beta mu. Now using the symmetry property that this is equal to R beta mu alpha eta that is interchanging these two pairs of indices it remains invariant and using that fact i have you know r alpha beta equal to g mu eta that is this one times this quantity r beta mu alpha eta now again using uh, uh, this relation that is over here uh, the result of this inner product is to take this index and place it as a contravariant index with mu changed to eta. So this will become R beta eta alpha eta. But eta is a, a, a summation index which is the same as say R beta mu mu. And this is nothing but the Ricci tensor with indices uh, beta alpha. So that means R alpha beta is equal to R beta alpha. Now we take the inner product of the Ricci tensor R alpha beta with the contravariant metric tensor such that uh, the new quantity is G alpha beta times R alpha beta. Both the indices alpha and beta are being summed over and therefore uh, the resultant quantity have no free in the index. So the resultant quantity is a scalar quantity and we denote it by R and is called the Ricci scalar. So Ricci scalar is defined as G alpha beta r alpha beta but then r alpha beta is nothing but r alpha mu beta mu so explicitly such scalar is equal to g alpha beta r alpha mu beta mu now the ricci tensor and ricci scalar satisfy a couple of identities uh, called the bianchi identities and uh, we will discuss them now Uh, to simplify the calculations, we now use geodesic coordinates and we already know that in geodesic coordinates at a particular point in uh, the space, the Christopher symbols vanish. And therefore, uh, lots of the calculations uh, become easier. So at a particular point in space-time, we use geodesic coordinates with, uh, uh, you know, the Christopher symbols in that particular coordinate system equal to zero. And then at that particular point, if we use the geodesic coordinates corresponding to that point, the, the uh, uh, Riemann curvature tensor becomes, if you remember its definition from here, we see that these terms involve Christopher symbols and therefore they become zero in the geodesic coordinate system at that particular point where we are evaluating this Riemann curvature tensor. 
So only these two terms survive. So we have in the geodesic coordinates r alpha mu beta gamma equal to gamma mu alpha gamma comma beta minus gamma mu alpha beta comma gamma. Remember, even though the Christopher symbols are zero at that point, their derivatives are not zero. And that's why we have uh, the curvature tensor given by this expression. Now, in the geodesic coordinate systems, the covariant derivative uh, reduced to the ordinary derivative also, since the Christopher symbols are zero. And therefore, if I take the covariant derivative of uh, the Riemann curvature tensor at this particular, at, at that particular point, I will have R alpha mu beta gamma semicolon eta and this is the covariant derivative with respect to x eta. But now, since I am using geodesic coordinates, this will be simply the ordinary derivative with respect to x eta. So this will be r alpha mu beta gamma comma eta. But in the geodesic coordinates, r, r, r alpha mu beta gamma is simply this. So I need to take the derivative with respect to eta only. So the first term will become gamma mu alpha gamma comma beta eta minus and the second term becomes gamma mu alpha beta gamma eta. Remember these are second derivatives with respect to gamma and eta which will be the same as uh, you know second derivative with respect to eta x eta first and x gamma later. So uh, there is a symmetry with respect to gamma and eta here and beta and eta here. So this is also equal to gamma mu alpha beta eta gamma. Now I consider the cyclic permutation of these three indices. So that eta comes here, beta takes the position of gamma and gamma goes to the position of A. So I will end up with this equation. So in that case, I will do the same over here also and this will simply become gamma mu alpha eta beta comma gamma and that is because again as earlier the covariant derivative reduces to the ordinary derivative in the geodesic coordinate system and this expression simply becomes gamma mu alpha beta comma eta gamma minus gamma mu alpha eta comma beta gamma and I will do this uh, uh, cyclic permutation of these indices once to get a third equation r alpha mu comma gamma eta semicolon beta which is the same as ordinary derivative now and it will be equal to this. Now uh, noting that you know the second order derivatives with respect to the coordinates uh, remain invariant, remain unchanged if I change the order of differentiation. Uh, we see that this quantity is actually equal to uh, gamma mu alpha beta comma eta gamma and this one where derivative with respect to x beta is taken first and x gamma next the same as this one where derivative with respect to x gamma is taken first and with respect to beta next. Now we see that if I add all these three terms, all these three equations, this term is cancelled by this term, this term is cancelled by this term and this term is cancelled by this term. So if I add th these three uh, expressions, I will end up with r mu alpha beta gamma comma eta then cyclically permuting these three these last three indices r mu alpha eta beta gamma semicolon gamma plus r mu uh, sorry r alpha mu then gamma eta semicolon beta is equal to zero because 
from here we see that the right hand side cancels. So this is one of the Bianchi identities. Further, we can put gamma equal to mu here in this expression and uh, the result would be that r alpha mu beta mu semicolon theta plus here I put uh, gamma equal to mu so I will get this and in this expression gamma equal to mu gives the right hand side remains the same. Further, we note that the covariant derivative of the metric tensor is zero. And therefore, if I multiply, if I consider a term like this, g alpha eta r alpha mu beta mu, then the covariant derivative of the whole thing with respect to eta, as far as that this derivative is concerned, covariant derivative is concerned, this metric tensor is like uh, a um, a constant term because derivative with respect to covariant derivative of that with respect to x eta is going to be zero. So I can multiply this equation with g alpha eta, put g alpha eta here, and g alpha eta here, and I can take this inside this. That will be equivalent to g alpha eta r alpha mu beta mu, then the covariant derivative of the whole thing because the covariant derivative of metric tensor with respect to eta is zero. So this equation after multiplying with g alpha mu and taking g alpha uh, alpha eta inside and taking the covariant derivative later, I will get the, from the first term g alpha eta r alpha mu beta mu semicolon eta and similarly with other terms also I can take this metric tensor term inside before taking the covariant derivative. I get this expression. And first we note that this object is nothing but, this object is nothing but r alpha, sorry, this object is nothing but r alpha beta and then g alpha eta r alpha beta is like raising the alpha indice index to a superscript one. So this together uh, will end up with a new tensor with one contravariant uh, index and one covariant index. So that will be like g alpha eta r alpha beta. So that will be a new tensor with a free contravariant index eta and a free covariant index beta and we will use the same symbol r to represent the new tensor also. From the positioning of the indices we will know that this is actually equal to this object. So uh, the first term now becomes this is equal to g alpha eta r alpha beta then semicolon eta. But this object is called r eta beta as I have done here, then semicolon eta. Now we go to this term uh, which is g alpha eta r alpha mu mu eta and uh, using the symmetry of this, then this will change the sign if I interchange uh, this and this indices, I will get an overall minus sign and mu eta here becomes eta mu. So minus b alpha eta r alpha mu eta mu. But this object over here is nothing but r alpha eta. The Ricci tensor r alpha eta. So I will have minus O G alpha eta R alpha eta semicolon beta and this is nothing but uh, the uh, on, uh, this uh, inner product with the contravariant metric tensor where both alpha indi index and eta index are summed over. So this is the scalar which we defined earlier to be the Ricci scalar. 
So we have this object equal to minus then Ritchie scalar semicolon beta. Now we consider this term G alpha eta R alpha mu eta beta semicolon mu. And to proceed further, uh, we write this quantity, the uh, Riemann curvature tensor as G mu rho R alpha rho eta beta. This is an expression that we have used in the beginning of this lecture as well. So this will be equal to this object. Now I can take this to the left and take this over here. So I will have G mu rho G alpha eta R alpha uh, R rho alpha then uh, so R alpha rho eta beta. But now I can interchange rho and alpha that will change the sign introduce a factor of minus one and if I interchange these two indices also that will also introduce another minus sign. So together these two minus signs become plus one. So we will have G mu rho G alpha eta then R with these indices interchange. So R rho alpha and with these indices interchange I will have beta eta. Then the covariant derivative with respect to mu. But now we see that G alpha eta R rho alpha beta eta. So this is equivalent to raising this index up and, and that index is replaced by eta. So I have this object equal to R rho eta beta eta. But this is nothing but the Ricci tensor R rho beta because this index and this index are made equal and summed over. So the result is G mu rho R rho beta and semicolon mu. But what is this object? This is equal to raising this index rho of this Ricci tensor. So that will become mu. So that is nothing but uh, R mu beta comma mu. So we have now found Uh, expression for this quantity and this quantity and this quantity and we have seen that this object is R eta beta semicolon eta and this object is R mu R mu beta semicolon uh, mu and this object is minus r semicolon beta where this is which is scalar. Substituting these two these three uh, uh, results here in equation 3.3 we get r eta beta semicolon eta plus r mu beta semicolon mu minus r semicolon beta equal to 0. But eta is being summed over, so I can call eta by any other name I want and I call it mu. So this is equal to R mu beta comma semicolon mu, which is the same as this quantity. So this becomes twice R mu beta semicolon mu minus R semicolon beta equal to 0. So I can divide this by 2, so I will get beta. So R mu beta minus half of R mu beta semicolon mu minus R, uh, sorry, I am dividing it by half, so there, uh, dividing it by 2, so there will be a half in the second term, then R semicolon beta is equal to 0. Now, this can be written in the following way. So, if I put uh, say a half, then delta mu beta, then R semicolon mu, 
and since there is a summation over mu the result of this summation will be equal to r semicolon beta so this i can write it that form then i can take uh, you know the covariant derivative with respect to mu as a common term acting on r mu beta minus half delta mu beta times the scalar quantity r so i can write this as r mu beta minus half delta mu beta times r then semicolon mu is equal to zero and that's exactly what I have written here. Now, R mu beta is a tensor of type 1, 1, contravariant rank 1 and covariant rank 1. And this uh, product of delta is also a tensor of type 1, 1. And this is a scalar quantity. So, this whole object is a tensor of type 1, 1. This is also a tensor of type 1, 1. And their difference is also a tensor of type 1. And we are taking the uh, derivative, the covariant derivative of a tensor of type 1, 1. And therefore, the result is also a tensor. So, this object, which is a tensor of type 1, 1, is given a name. And that is called the Einstein tensor. So, Einstein tensor is equal to R mu beta minus half delta mu beta times R. And this equation is that the covariant derivative of the Einstein tensor with respect to uh, say x mu is equal to 0. And this quantity is, this equation is also called a Bianchi identity. So, there are two Bianchi identities. One is this one, that is the covariant derivative of the Einstein tensor is 0. And uh, another one is this this uh, equation involving uh, the Riemann curvature tensor. 